I'd like to welcome everybody today to our Bluegrass Z Space webinar. We are so glad that you decided to join us today. Uh, we're excited to be offering it in this time of you know, uncertainty. I know a lot of schools are not exactly sure how this fall is going to work. And so we are uh, hoping to offer that uh, solution or at least one of those solutions uh, here today. So uh, we are joined by numerous guys from uh, ZSpace, but our presenter is mostly going to be uh, from Joe Parlier. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about Joe and then Bluegrass before we, we turn it over. Um, Bluegrass is an educational technology company. Uh, we are located in Lexington, Kentucky, uh, but we serve uh, many different areas. Uh, we serve Kentucky, West Virginia, Virginia, Maryland, Delaware, uh, Washington, D.C., and Florida. Uh, we provide curriculum, training equipment, uh, and services from many of the top manufacturers uh, in industry. Uh, we are uh, proud to, to be able to provide high quality training materials, uh, equipment uh, for both the traditional K through 12 classroom and uh, technology programs in CTE uh, and at the college and university level. Anytime that you have any questions um, today about our within the webinar, feel free to ask them in the chat room. Uh, you can access the chat at the very bottom. We will be recording this session. So everything that is uh, that you see, everything that we, we do in chat will be recorded and we will post that at a later date on Bluegrass's YouTube channel. Let me give you a little bit of uh, bio behind Joe who will be presenting for ZSpace today. Uh, Joe had a career in public ed education. He was a math teacher, science teacher. He served as an elementary principal and a high school principal and a super assistant superintendent. And then he was the associate state superintendent. Um, he's extended his career in the private se sector, supporting schools and the implementation of reform initiatives in emerging technology. His research interests relate to improving student learning and school performance through comprehensive improvement planning. Uh, he has lots of different experiences, ranging from rural to urban settings. His concentration of work is uh, really turning around low performing schools with uh, very diverse student populations and and diverse economic challenges. Uh, all the schools that Dr. Parlier was a part of uh, moved the needle uh, in a positive direction on the student achievement. And uh, you know his current role at ZSpace is the director of ZSpace Education Solutions, allows him to work with schools across the, the US and internationally on comprehensive planning to integrate AR, VR technology into the curriculum. Additionally, additionally he enjoys the opportunity to work with educators engineers to design content that engages uh, students in exper experiential learning. Before we get started, I do want to remind uh, those of you that are attending that we will be offering a second webinar. and We're going to post a link um, at the end of, of this webinar uh, to the other webinar, which is a CTE mm -hmm. webinar. That will take place on Thursday at the same time mm -hmm. at 11 o'clock. So at this moment, I'm going to go ahead and turn this over to Joe and allow him to take it from here. Thanks so much, Nathan. And um, wow, you reminded me a lot of, of a lot of things, but I just want to say to the group who've joined us here today, thanks for carving out this time to learn a little bit more about AR, VR, and how it's being used in education, because even though I've had a chance to do a lot of things in school districts and schools, um, I don't think anything compares to what you all are, are encountering right now. And if you're anything like the districts that are local to me, and I'm located in Nashville, Tennessee, um, you know, they're, they're still very much on a day-to-day -day basis making game time decisions. So um, I just uh, applaud you for the work. I thank you for the work. Um, I, I do believe you're in a lose-lose situation right now because you just can't even satisfy a majority of the people around you. So um, ha having said all that, you know, as we think about moving into this virtual space of teaching and learning, whether you're calling it blended learning, hybrid learning, remote learning, this opportunity for kids to learn in a space that's not what we're accustomed to teaching in, um, 
looking for opportunities to make that experience and really leverage um, the opportunity to not just take what we've done previously and digitize it, but to truly innovate. Um, so today what we're going to do is we're going to obviously frame everything around this huge instructional challenge you have that's been created by a pandemic. Um, we're going to look at augmented and virtual reality, AR and VR. We're going to talk about what it is, what research says about it, um, and how it's being used across the country to enhance STEAM programs, career technical education programs, college and universities, and, and most likely uh, in the workforce with services that you may take advantage of. Um, we're going to talk about a little bit about the CARES Act and how something like this can fall into those uh, allowances that, that you have. And then I want to give you some time for uh, questions, answers, but also to get some additional information. So just like you, we've had to really step back and look at, from a product standpoint, how does augmented virtual reality help kids to learn? How does it break some barriers that they may have traditionally have? But um, what I'd like to do as we start here is just challenge you to think a little bit about what do you know about augmented and virtual reality? Is it something you've seen in a store? Is it something you've experienced either yourself or with your own children as they've been playing games? Regardless, it's probably something that you've seen before. Uh, this is an example of an IKEA application that allows you to take your device, hover into a space, and place furniture in that space so that you get some sense of what it might look like. So it's being used. It may have been on Gray's Anatomy when the doctors were looking at an image of the heart so that they could plan a procedure on a patient. Or it may have been in another movie like Iron Man where they're able to take content and project it into that space, manipulate that content so that they can learn more about it, do something with it, et cetera. But did you know that kids are actually using this for learning? Um, in over 2000 districts across the country for career and technical education, for STEM learning, uh, for art, students are able to take content that traditionally they had to work with in a hands-on way, project it into their environment, and work with it. So what, what is this space? Um, when we think about the technology landscape, um, I want to define a couple of terms so that we have sort of a consistent definition running. But when we talk about virtual reality, it's the complete immersion of the student from his or her surroundings and then providing that student with access to content in that space. So if you've used something like Google Cardboard or Oculus Rift or any of the HMDs, which stands for head mounted displays, you've seen virtual reality. And typically when a student is in that space, let's say for example, they are at the Roman Colosseum, regardless of which direction they look in, they're going to see what would actually be in that space. One of the characteristics of true virtual reality is it's an independent experience. The only person who's participating in that experience is the student who has the head mounted device on. So, from a collaboration standpoint, there's not a lot of opportunity for students to work together currently on projects. In contrast, with augmented reality, the student has the real world around him or herself, but by holding their device up in front of them, they're able to take digital content and include it. Probably the best experience I can give you of that is an application that many of our students are using, maybe even we're using in Snapchat. The whole idea that I can turn on my camera, I can take a picture of myself, myself and my friends, and then I can augment that real world content with digital content. So if I want to put a hat on myself that's not really there, I'm able to, to do that. Another good example that has really even shut down some streets here in Nashville is Pokemon Go, 
this idea that you can take your device, you can go into public spaces and you can search for virtual or digital content to earn points. But you've also probably seen it in education spaces. There's a lot of augmented reality applications out there where students can, for example, take a cube of hydrogen, a cube of oxygen, merge them together, and it shows them what a water molecule uh, is represented as. And then you have this space that sort of fits in between or has characteristics of both virtual and augmented reality. And we refer to that space as Z space because it has elements of that immersive experience. A student can pull up the Roman Colosseum. They can see it, they can take it apart, they can look inside of it. But it also has the real space around them because they're not isolated with a head mounted display. And then it also has some features of augmented reality where they have that digital content and real content intersecting in the same space. In this space, there is a high level of interactivity and collaboration because more than one student can work in that space. So let's take a little closer look at the space that so many kids are starting to learn in. Welcome to the real world of virtual reality on the ZSpace platform. What is ZSpace? It's a tabletop virtual reality that's transforming education today. ZSpace functions as your typical Windows PC until you open the ZSpace application and then the magic really begins. Long story short, ZSpace tracks the user's eyewear and stylus in real time, allowing the user to comfortably reach in and interact, move around, dissect, blow up, or change different variables within the environment. Well, All right, so as you saw there, um, on the ZSpace computer, whether it's an all-in-one or a laptop, you have a student who is able to manipulate and work with content using that stylus. You also notice that the student has on these glasses. Those glasses are tracked so that the student can just look around objects as if the object were really in front of them. So whether it's STEM content, maybe layers of the earth at the elementary level, or career and technical education content at the high school in automotive type courses, but dissections in biology, regardless of what that content is, the student is able to manipulate that content and experience it as if it were really there. Some other affordances of working in this space, um, teachers are able to connect the device to an interactive flat panel, which allows for whole group demonstration and instruction. And then it also is allowing the students to um, take a look at, demonstrate their learning. Um, what we have here is an actual example. This is live right now. Um, Greg Johnson has his Z space up and here he's dissecting layers of the earth. Now you'll notice that as Greg is manipulating the content, he's able to look at it. He has 360 degrees of rotation. He's able to zoom in and zoom out so he can examine things up close. And then he's able to change that stylus from a tool that moves things around to a tool that dissects objects. So I really want to underscore the fact that although earlier I showed you how this worked in the movies and on shows like Grey's Anatomy, this isn't the future of how things could be. This is actually today that students are able to take work with that content just as they would have. And it's not just science content. It's shortly you're going to see where it's everything from math manipulatives to art being able to sculpt and 3D print. So it really cuts across the curriculum and cuts across grade levels to help meet the educational needs of the students. Now that you've seen some of those features, I want to also share with you that the device you're looking at here is also a Windows based computer. So all of the other things that students would do on a desktop computer in the case of the all in one 
or on a Chromebook or a ta uh, tablet um, laptop device, the students are able to do in addition to the things that they're able to experience in virtual reality. So I mentioned earlier that there's been this big shift for us just as it has been for you. And what we've really had to do is work with our students, teachers, customers to see, okay, where does a tool like this fit in this range that goes from face-to-face -face instruction to distance education and remote learning? And at different, depending on how the teacher's using it, it's going to fit into lots of different strategies that may be used. Obviously, in a school building, students can have the devices to work with. Uh, we have schools that are checking out um, the laptop devices to small groups of students that are taking specific courses like uh, lab-based courses, chemistry, career tech ed courses. Um, we even have an elementary school that's checking out devices for their elementary kids to experience the next generation science standards through what we call these base experiences. Also, though, it's given teachers access to the content to be able to present remotely. So just like Greg was able to do a moment ago, the instructor is able to, through whatever your video conferencing platform is, share his or her screen so that they can engage students in learning the content that has to be taught. So why, why do this? Well, in his book, Experience on Demand, Jeremy Balenson, a professor at Stanford University, looked at what's the, what's the reason, what's the rationale for providing students with this type of learning? And believe it or not, he was able to go back about 40 years to the early 1980s and find research about the use of virtual reality. Now, obviously at that time, it wasn't in schools, it was more in the medical profession as well as the military. But as virtual reality became more and more available to the consumer, they essentially found that how people use a tool like ZSpace fits into one of four categories. And he coined the acronym DICE with the D standing for a tool like ZSpace lets kids do something that would otherwise be too dangerous to do, would maybe be impossible to do, would be counterproductive to do, or would be too expensive. So as you think about the content you're able to provide to kids through a tool like this, you'll probably find that it fits into one or more of these categories. You know, we would never take a group of 30 kids and put them in an auto lab disassembling and assembling engines and especially not using electric engines. Students in a physics lab aren't able to change an experiment and do it on earth and then run it on Jupiter to see gravity. We wouldn't go to the beach and put jetties in place just so we could observe how it ruins land. Or in the case of anatomy and physiology, we don't oftentimes have the ability to put students in front of cadavers because of the expense. So it's happening currently across the United States. I've mentioned it earlier in over 2000 school districts with over a million students. And it's been in the space for around five and a half years now. So we have some emerging results to show the impact. And in summary, what the research says is that when students interact with content in this way, it's very much like the research we saw uh, when we were in our foundations of ed psych, that um, when kids experience something, the retention increases significantly with real objects, but also with this research with virtual tools. So we find that students have a deeper understanding of what they're learning. We find that they're more engaged with what they're learning. We find that they're motivated and they want to learn. We find that students are prepared for the workplace and we find that student outcomes are improved. So as you're thinking about this moment, in really in history, where you're having to determine, okay, how is it that 
we can take things that teachers would have traditionally done in the classroom and replicate them in an at-home remote learning environment. A tool like this, like other tools you're sending home with Chromebooks, laptops, et cetera, is able to deliver those hands-on experiences very much like how you would have delivered them um, in the classroom with real materials. So what content is there for students to experience? I mentioned earlier that it cuts across grade levels and it cuts across content areas. Typically, we students, see students have the most success with working with content in a virtual space at second to third grade and higher. Um, as you know, students are developing their fine motor skills, so that ability to manipulate content with the stylus is driven a lot of times by that fine motor skill development. Um, but it does, content does go down to second and third grade level, and then it goes up through um, college and university level. And then there are lots of applications of the content, obviously, in the medical profession, uh, other industries. So when we think about the content that's available, you see here a couple of categories. I would encourage you, if you have some time and would like to um, go to the ZSpace website, you'll be able on that site to see and browse this learning content. You also can explore the learning applications. These learning applications each align with different areas and content areas where you would use the, the content to be used, just like any other application that you look at getting for your teachers. So before we dig deeper into the content, how is it that we see teachers successfully using it? Well, what we like to say about ZSpace is that ZSpace is supplements the teacher's instruction just as any other teaching resource does. And when it's appropriate for students to experience, visualize, manipulate content, there's probably a space for ZSpace to be used. So on the wheel here, you see that ZSpace is a tool that's used to develop problem solving skills, introduce new content, deepen and develop an understanding of content and vocabulary, allow students to summarize learning. It's a great tool for differentiating, whether you're trying to uh, meet students where they are and differentiate by process, or even by the product that they're producing to show their mastery of learning. It's a great tool for collaboration, not only with students sitting side by side working on content, but shortly working on content in remote locations that the students have in common. So as an example, you could be on your machine building a circuit, I could be on my machine building that, working on that same circuit and we can be collaborating. Accelerating learning, and what we see all the time, inspiring curiosity and students to want to know more, to go deeper with their learning. You'll see on the right here, I've got two pictures from Valparaiso High School. And I wanna dig a little bit deeper in these pictures to give a, an image of how um, Heidi is using ZSpace. Um, a couple of key things that I wanna note in the image here though, uh, you'll notice over here on the board, she's got the week agenda. Um, notice how she's integrating lots of different tools. She's got a PowerPoint about bony fish that she wants to go over. They're obviously taking some notes. You know, the things that we see teachers do that engage students in learning and learning at a deep level. Um, and then you see here the ZSpace dissection. Now, the other thing I want you to notice is that here at the bottom of the board, she has uh, some type of species that the students are gonna dissect in these Carolina biological containers. That's really important to point out because what we don't see is that um, teachers give up one thing for another. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a moment. So as you move forward and you look at this second image here, 
you see that the students have moved locations. They're now in the ZSpace lab. Uh, on that first one, they had their PowerPoint up. And you see that on the board here, they're in Cyber Science 3D. Um, and they're looking at the Mahi Mahi fish. Now, notice that each student has their own content in front of them. We do have some students partnered up. Um, and the real value here is that each student has the same content versus when students are working with the real species in the dissection with those Carolina biological models, there is some variation in species. We hear it all the time when we go to medical schools that are using our product, the value of having that standardized cadaver that students can practice, visualize on, and then going into the cadaver lab and having the real material that varies to some degree. So here you saw Heidi was using ZSpace, the ARVR, in a lot of different ways for students to learn, but it wasn't about doing ZSpace or using ARVR. It was about learning the content that she needed her students to learn and be successful with. So now that we've seen sort of at a high level what ARVR is, how it can, why it should be considered and is valuable to the teaching and learning process, and we've seen an example of how it's used in different ways, what does it look like in your classrooms? Well, we'll start here by just looking at how the content and resources are organized. First of all, for your teachers, each time they go on that website and they find a lesson that they want to teach, they're going to find a short video overview. Teachers don't always have access to a Z space at home, so they can open the activity and do it themselves. So the video overview is going to show them when you take your students to do, or when your students are doing the investigation of an open and closed circuit lab, this is what they'll be doing. It also has an activity plan. Now the activity plan is what most of us think of when we think of a resource like this. It's got your key vocabulary. Um, you see here, this is an elementary lesson. Um, it's got an overview. What are your essential questions and objectives? What's a good way to introduce the activity? And then it's got line by line, what are students going to encounter when they complete that activity? In addition to the activity plan, you'll notice there's a PDF worksheet, a Google Doc worksheet, and a Microsoft Word worksheet. What we try to do is give teachers the maximum ability to implement and integrate ZSpace into the structure that they use in their classroom. So one teacher may have kids complete the activity on the ZSpace and submit through the application their work. Another teacher may want to take a PDF, upload it to their learning management system, let students complete it by typing their responses into that document or writing them. We may have other teachers who want to do it through Google Classroom and use the Google Doc worksheet. We have some schools that are Microsoft um, Office 365. Regardless of which platform learning management system you use, you have the ability and flexibility to access all the resources and use them in that environment. We know that when rubber meets the road, teachers are required to teach certain standards. So you'll find that each activity, for, I'm sorry, for each activity, you can look at the standards that connect to the activity. Likewise, teachers can look at their standards they're teaching and see here are all the activities that will support me teaching that standard. Two things that teachers asked for and we were able to provide for them was quick launch codes and quick launch links. Again, as teachers are managing remote environments, students being able to log on to their LMS and access content, um, these quick launch codes and links allow teachers to embed those into their lessons 
so that when students are on their device, one minute they can be in Google Classroom working on a document, maybe watching a YouTube video, the next minute they're quick in a quick launch link and they have content that they're going to experience and manipulate. So when you're thinking about an implementation of AR VR, what are your decision points? Well, first of all, you do have a hardware decision point. Are you wanting to have a lab? Are you wanting teachers to have desktop devices through which they can present content with the all-in-one? Or do you want a more flexible mobile option with the laptop? Regardless of which device you use, you're going to be able to deliver the same content. Now, as you're thinking about Chromebooks, laptop purchases, et cetera, um, keep in mind that when the student is not on the virtual reality content, they can do all of the other things they would do on any other device. And in fact, you can load other software onto the device for students to use. When you do that, once you've chosen your, your hardware, then you have to think about how you're going to implement. Is this something that you're going to do for a specific career tech ed pathway? Is it something that you're going to do for a certain grade level or a certain course like chemistry, biology, anatomy, and physiology? Based on how you decide you're going to use the integration of AR, VR, you choose certain apps. Now, every device is going to come with this standard bank of software. This includes Studio, which cuts across grade levels and content areas, and it's a modeling um, application. So this is where you could see the Roman Colosseum, you could take any animal apart, you could um, experience the Globe Theater in literature. Leopoly Maker is another creation application that you may remember from earlier when the student had the duck. Um, this is a place where students can sculpt and 3D print. So if you have 3D printers, your students will be able to create content that can ultimately be printed. GeoGebra is an application teachers currently have access to at no cost, and it is a um, math application for middle and high school. Tinkercad is a foundational computer science coding and creation application that a lot of elementary and some middle school students use. And then Unity is the software behind all of these experiences. It's how the content's created. Um, you're gonna probably have some students in a computer science pathway at the high school who begin coding in Unity and creating this content themselves. Which really brings up a great uh, another point in that this is an open platform. So if students want to create their own games and content, they're able to do that. All of those come with your device and then you decide how you're going to implement. If you're an elementary school or a middle school, you're probably going to choose the STEM and STEAM applications. If you're a middle school that has a health science focus, maybe it's a magnet program, or a high school, or a college, you're gonna to wanna to choose from some of the applications in the advanced sciences that help with teaching physics, anatomy, physiology, chemistry, biology. Also, if you're a high school that has a physical science course that is not mathematics based, you may want to include Newton's Park and Franklin's lab because they're conceptual. Um, they support the teaching of conceptual physical science. And then finally, if you wanna add on to this STEAM bundle because you want students to have anatomy and physiology content, Human Anatomy Atlas is a good addition. Let's take a look at how a school has integrated and used there's no way a student will come into a Z-Space lab and not be engaged, if not engrossed, in the learning. 
Liberty is a very progressive school district. We have approximately 10,000 students. We are about high student achievement, and Z-Space was just right at the cutting edge of what we wanted students to use in their day-to-day -day learning. All of a sudden, the concepts come alive. I have one student in my environmental science class. When we're talking about the biome and ecosystems, he's kind of like, oh, okay, I just want to put my head down and I really don't want to hear this. I brought the class over here in this lab and gave them one of the activities that dealt with ecology. And he took the lead. He was like, no, this is what this does. And he's explaining it to everyone. They're open, they're receptive, they're energetic, they're more engaged. And with the Z space, I was able to view the organism and able to see in detail what I'm looking at. Instead of just looking at a 2D picture, you're actually able to use your hands and to use your head to get that hands-on type of experience like I was there. It deepens the learning experiences and certainly the learning opportunities. I really want to be a heart surgeon. As I was playing with the Z space, I grabbed the heart and I felt the heartbeat. And that was really, really cool. This is helping us have our kids see things that they wouldn't be able to see if we didn't have something like this here. It's like you were actually holding the heart. The realism of it is amazing. We don't have a lot of money to buy dissection tools and you know animals. And with Z-Space, we don't have to purchase everything. We can go right on there and I can say, pull up the digestive system. Let's look at the liver. What, what's inside the liver? In a virtual environment, you are in charge of your own learning. You can go as far, as deep as you'd like in your own exploration. Yeah, I mentioned science, math, and social studies, but our art teachers have been using it as well. And since we're moving into the direction of STEAM, including that arts in that, it's been a great benefit all around. I, I never thought I'd be able to use a 3D computer. I would not expect the school to have something like this, but seeing it firsthand, it is a remarkable type of technology. I'm happy, happy. I hope next year I get to use it all the time. Z-Space, to me, is like an awakening of a child's mind because they are actively engaged and they can see things in Z-Space that they can't see in a textbook. And when you take those glasses off, you're walking away with a new understanding of the learning like never before. All right, so I wanted you to hear from some teachers, students, administrators who've actually implemented and, and used a lot of the applications that you see here that fall into our typical K-12 or community college type implementation. But just as you can implement in a more core academic STEM focused program, there's also a lot of content for career and technical education. So for those who've joined and maybe have um, a responsibility for overseeing career tech programs, or maybe you don't work directly with those programs, but you know somebody who does, you see the areas that software aligns to. So your pathways for health science and public service, advanced manufacturing and skills, uh, which includes construction, HVAC, industrial controls, um, agri-science, which includes welding, and then transportation that includes um, gas powered vehicles as a, well as electric and hybrid vehicles. Again, content that you would never put a student in front of the real object because of safety. Now, keep in mind that on Thursday of this week, there's another opportunity to dig deeper into career and technical education software. So if you have a colleague who works in CTE and they want to hear from our Director of Career and Technical Education, certainly invite them to be a part of that event that Bluegrass has shared with you. But again, as you're thinking about your CTE programs and how they're going to deliver what's always been delivered in a lab to students remotely, this is a real opportunity. Within these pathways, you also have the assessment alignment. So we do have a partnership with Nocti where as students complete certain modules, they can also complete the assessments and get credentialed. So as you're thinking about how you might implement and integrate this, I also encourage you to think about the probably the most important part, and that is how teachers are supported with this integration. So part of what we do is partner with you 
to look at your overall professional development plan and help you look at how this supports what you're trying to do in your district. Um, again, ZSpace supplements and integrates into what you're trying to accomplish. But you also have some other tools that support you in the ZSpace community, online professional development, and technical services. So we know the key to successful implementation is making sure teachers are trained well and understand the impact and how to deliver on that. So currently, you can register and check these out for yourself now. There are over 25 courses. It's an area that's growing. And in fact, since I created this slide a few weeks ago, we've already added courses for teachers that show how to um, use ZSpace in a blended or remote learning environment. And it's everything from how to use applications to how to integrate the technology to how to troubleshoot and provide technical support. You can get these by going to zspace.com. Just go to educator resources and you can follow the take a course link. Teachers also have an ability to communicate with each other in the zspace community. Those 2000 plus schools across the country are able to engage in our community and share the things they build and use. Um, it's kind of cool in this screenshot from the community. We had a teacher from Burbank Public Schools, California, who posted on teaching about COVID-19 using ZSpace. There's actually a model of a COVID, I'm sorry, a coronavirus in VivEd Science. Um, you also see down here, Royal Elementary, that's a school in South Carolina, where they built a lesson on needs and wants. Your teachers are able to not only use the lessons that we have, but they can build their own. And then finally, we know the technology has to work well and for in order for students and teachers to be successful. So there's a bank of technical resources to support you there. So how are people doing this? Typically, um, schools have purchased using either their local funds, some of them have built it into bonds, but more recently we've seen schools um, implement using the CARES Act. Um, obviously pre-pandemic, uh, Title I funds were a significant source of those who implement and how they paid for it, but now with this additional funding from the CARES Act, we've seen schools leverage that funding to provide this experience. So when you think about the allowable activities from the CARES Act, um, whether it's through more traditional ESSA, IDA funding, or through their traditional Title I funds to turn around low performing schools that have uh, high populations, concentrations of low income students. Also, preparing for and coordinating long-term closures. Now, this has been obviously under a new type of activity that is aligned to the CARES Act as a result of the pandemic. But we do see a lot of schools leveraging the ability to provide this content virtually as a way to address what typically would have been delivered in a hands-on lab type environment. So whether it's STEM courses at the elementary and middle school, whether it's um, high school science courses or career technical ed programs. Um, it's also allowing them to purchase to education technology for students. So as schools have traditionally allocated funds for Chromebooks or other laptop devices, um, they're able to purchase the ZSpace laptop and then have that additional functionality with VR, AR. Um, we do have schools that use the ZSpace in their summer or after school programs. And then finally, that sort of catch all of any other activities that schools uh, might plan to deliver services on. So now that I've given you an overview of what AR VR is, the why of using it, and the how schools are doing it, it's really a question of you for you of how uh, and, and what are the next steps that you want to take. Um, 
I would strongly encourage you to, next time you go to the dentist, to the doctor, the next time you buy a new car, the next time you go to upgrade your cell phone, to start looking at the level at which augmented and virtual reality are being used. Um, dentists are now scanning your tooth, printing a model, and putting it in your mouth while you're in the chair. So it's no longer where it has to be sent away to a lab. Doctors are now taking your MRI scans, importing them into a space like this, and in some cases, into Z space, and they're able to show you what's going on inside of your body. Um, car manufacturers are starting to train their employees. Electrical companies are doing the same thing. So, it's really not a matter of, are we gonna use augmented and virtual reality? It's really more a matter of when are we gonna do it and how are we gonna deliver on that? And as you're out there searching, um, I hope having this awareness of a tool like ZSpace helps you to think a little bit about how you might can impact your programs and maximize the learning opportunities for your students. You have a team at Bluegrass? as well as ZSpace, who's willing to support you in this. So if you have specific questions, I'm gonna turn it back over to, to Nathan so he can talk a little bit about the, the process there. But I also um, want to offer an opportunity, if any of you have questions, feel free to send those to me in the chat and I will be glad to, to respond to those. Nathan. Thank you very much, Joe. I appreciate it. Uh, once again, thank you for all of you to, who have attended. Um, so we have numerous people here from different states uh, who, have, who are attending this webinar. And so we wanted to give you the opportunity to, to contact any of these. So I'm Nathan Hicks. I'm the Special Projects Manager. Uh, you see my email address there on the screen. I'm in Kentucky. So if you're in Kentucky, you can contact me. Uh, if you are in the mid-Atlantic area, which is Virginia, West Virginia, Maryland, Delaware, DC, uh, you can contact Aaron. Uh, He's the program consultant for the, the mid-Atlantic. They're at afristo at bluegrassct.com. Uh, if you're in any other area, uh, say Florida, um, you can uh, just email us at info at bluegrass.com. We're gonna uh, be able to connect you with, with who you uh, will need to, to talk to about anything that uh, relates to, to Z-Space and, and Bluegrass. If you guys will look in your chat, you will see there's a link to the webinar on Thursday. Uh, Thursday will be more focused on CTE programs. Uh, today was more focused on the general, generalization of Z-Space in the K-12 area. So if you're looking at wanting to see how this will uh, progress into CTE programs uh, like advanced manufacturing uh, with robotics, uh, health science. Um, there's, there's all types of, of programs, apps for the uh, CTE area. So you will want to go ahead and sign up for that. The link is there in the, the chat and that will be 11 o'clock on Thursday. Uh, I did want to open up before we jump off, uh, I wanted to open up if anybody has any questions for Joe about the, uh, about the, anything with Z-Space. And, and one correction on this slide that you see, uh, the general, uh, if you notice the, the chat room, our, our general questions need to go info at bluegrasset.com. So make sure it's just not bluegrass.com, but you add that ET on there too. Uh, we just noticed that typo. So does anybody have any questions? You can unmute yourself and uh, be able to ask Joe any questions or you can type them in the chat, either one. Uh, and Joe will be able to answer that. If you have any questions for Bluegrass, you can ask and we'll, we'll try to answer those as well. All right, Joe, I don't see any questions coming up. So once again, this is being recorded. We are going to post this on our Bluegrass YouTube page. 
uh, it will be a couple days before we get that up. So if you know anybody who would be interested in this, you can direct that. We will email that link to you guys and you can direct uh, any of your peers uh, to that website uh, so that they can view this video and, and you get a little bit more explanation, especially if you're trying to explain it. One other thing is if you would like a, uh, to get a good demo version of this, maybe see it in person, there are ways even through what we're doing right now in order to get that to you uh, or do that with you. So if you would please contact us, we would be happy to set something up uh, so that we can get a good idea of, so you can get an idea of what it is to react in, in real life. Uh, and then one final thing, there's one other link in the chat uh, if you want some definite more information, um, inquiring inquiry about a quote, anything like that, you can click that link and it's going to give you uh, an idea of, of what to use so that you can, um, so that we know what, how to better serve you and find a good solution. So if nobody has any other questions, we thank you guys for being on today and uh, hopefully we will hear from you soon and we will also see you on Thursday for those of you that want to be a part of our ZSpace CTE webinar this Thursday at 11 o'clock. Thank you guys, be safe, have a great afternoon.